Tio, welcome back to the program. Look at you. Where, where about in the world are you, man? The sun is shining. It always shines down on the righteous, I've been told, my friend. That it does. That it does, man. And let's keep it that way. You know, it's great to be here. Thank you, Adam, for this interview, man. And thank you to everyone that's in, involved in it. You know, it's a, it's honored to be back in the sport of boxing and in the eyes of the fans. I'm here to uh, establish myself more than just a takeover, but worldwide. Worldwide, baby. Worldwide takeover. <laughs> Listen, you, you know that during this interview, I'll be trying to blag you to come to the UK to fight in the UK at some point. But we'll get to that a little later on because we've got other things to take care of in the build-up we to must. Super Bowl weekend. Of course, man. Of yes, course. We'll get, we'll we get to must. All that. Um, I wanted, I wanted to start this away from boxing a little bit because the last time we spoke, obviously... Properly, but when we properly sat down, you were excited about becoming a father and all these types of things that were going to be entering your life. I keep up to date with you, obviously, on social media, man. And it's be it's a beautiful thing that you're sharing with the world, you and your boy and what have you. I want to know how much it's changed you. I want to know how much it's changed you as a man and whether it's changed you as a fighter, your attitude towards the fighting game. Well, I will say as, as, a, as a father now in the fatherhood department, I can honestly say, I think that you, you, we can relate on this. You have a beautiful son yourself, and I've got the privilege to even meet him. So I can say that it has definitely, I can see why God does what he does, and it bestows these blessings onto us for a good, good reason, for guidance. So it was great to have, you know, after, it was. I'm so proud of my decisions that I've made thus far after the Josh Taylor fight, the publicity stunt of saying I retired. It gave me that leverage and time to, to sit back and spend that quality time with my son, you know, because he just turned two and I kid you not, I didn't really get to spend any kind of quality time with him for almost a whole year, you know, uh, due to some complications, but it's okay. It's part of life. I I'm still here and the connection is more, is more greater than ever. You know what I'm saying? And, and I took that chance six months out and, and it, look where I'm at now. Look how I am, you know, and I just want to show the world this is because of my son that I have became uh, or I am becoming a man that I need to become in the eyes of the public, in the eyes of the children, and in definitely in the eyes of of the new generation that's coming. You know, uh, I'm a role model to these kids and I must I must condone myself. I must conduct myself that way. You know what I'm saying? And I and that's the most importance of it all. You know, so. It was it was a great feeling to do this. And I definitely want to show people, yes, I want the boxers to be embracing that. You know, if you do it this way, you don't have to worry about your son being hurt. You know, you don't have to worry about your family getting hurt. Yeah, you just got to just enjoy and show people the true self of you. And that's what I'm trying to show them in my platforms. Has it reignited a new fire? Because you've achieved so much already by the age of 25. I know you're 26 now, but has it reignited yes. a new fire? Oh, yes, most definitely. You know, this has definitely reignited something much more greater than than I am myself, you know, and that is, you know, what do I now have to give to my sport that it has given to me? You know, I'm a Hall of Famer, you know, regardless, you know, when we are done and we actually finally hang up the gloves, uh, you know, Teofimo Lopez will be amongst the greats to be with those Hall of Famers and to all those champions that are right behind you, so to speak, you know, or so to speak. So. You know, this thing right here is it was needed for me. You know, I just needed some time away from all this stuff and the cameras because, as you could tell, Adam, it gets exhausting a little bit mm -hmm. mentally, physically, you know, and sometimes it can even hurt you spiritually. So, you know, just just being underground for a second, uh, regrouping within myself, finding what did I miss that I was so great at when I came into this. You know, I was always, as you know, when you've seen my whole career, uh, if anyone has and you see me coming and climbing up the ranks and how I was so joyous and so happy and always laughing especially on press conference and and I said hey you know what that's what one that's where I got everyone not not from just fighting but from how I was and how I carried myself and and I look forward as this new year is here 2024 I I really want to re-bring that back into my life and and some because now we're 26. You know, I've closed in that chapter from when I was a, uh, from when I came out the womb to 25. We've closed it. We've learned from it. And now we take all those experiences and losses and lessons now into this new chapter of my life. Well, it's good to hear, man. And it's good to see because I've seen a couple of interviews that you've been doing recently and the buzz is back. 
the vibe, the vibe is coming back. And it's great to see, listen, bo boxing needs, listen, like you say, it's important to do the thing inside the ring, but also boxing needs to fall in love with characters. It falls in love with personalities. And that is the thing that people fell in love with originally. And it's good to see that thing. Tiafimo 2.0, the, the more mature father-like figure, but still with that cheeky little swag that's still going on, man. So, Oh, yeah, right. you know it. You know it. <laughs> so, so let's point towards uh, the fight that you've got coming up with Jermaine Lopez, okay? Um, uh, Jermaine Ortiz. Sorry, Jermaine Ortiz. This is um, Super Bowl weekend, uh, weekend. You're doing the Thursday. So as we build up towards the Super Bowl, first time in Las Vegas, obviously it's going to be a big week, huge week, and you get, kind of kick that off on, on the Thursday. Talk to me about the the historic relevance of that for you being involved in something like that and also this particular fight with you two having a little bit of uh, history from the golden gloves way back in 2015 man who'd have thought nine years ago it's a lot it sounds a long time ago but it feels like yesterday but go on i know right tell me about it has time have time doesn't wait for no man and no one so it's interesting right how how it turns back around so uh, how can I break this down? I say it like this, plain and simple. This is the super fight of the takeover. This is where we start everything and where we really amp it up for the boxing world and we shake it up again like we've done with the Taylors, with the Lomas, and a little bit of the Camboses. Now we shake it up again in my term, in my own way. So, you know, um, I'm very I'm very grateful. I just want to say thank you to Bob Aram, Todd DeBuff, the visionary of boxing of top rank, you know, and also I, I just want to thank ESPN for the beautiful platform and everyone and all my fans out there in the UK, you know, and all Europe too. You know, I'm so, I'm so honored, you know, it's great to be back in this, in this, um, in this time now, you know, fight, facing a fighter that I, I fought in the national golden gloves in the yeah. finals, you know, so in the finals, well, a lot of people don't understand USA boxing. This is one of the biggest, if not toughest, outside of the Olympic trials tournament in all of amateur boxing. So I'm not facing no chump. I'm facing the guy that was that was in the finals with me. So this is a great, great showdown. I, don't, I believe everyone should be there and their grandmother, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and honestly witness some greatness stuff right here. We both know each other from that from that time. I was 17. And now at 26, you know, let's see what else has he learned, what I have learned through the pro ranks. And, um, you know, look at it like this, Mandalay Bay Resort World. I, I mean, Mandalay Bay Resorts Casino, you know, Michelob Ultra Arena, you know, where there's 12,000 people in attendance. Uh, Super Bowl weekend. They're going to have the NFL experience there at the Mandalay Bay. They're going to host it. I hope that you're there, Adam, so you can Try win it. some more greatness. Try it. Listen. You know, every single time we try, we try our very best to get in there because there's something special. I've I've been lucky enough to see you do it in New York. Go on. I won't forget when you uh, it was you and um, my man with the glasses and the and the nice curly hair. Yeah, I was watching me and Edis Tatley fight, and you guys were recording it. And, that's right. And, you know, and and I I just love the way you guys had that reaction. He's like, oh, that's it, that's it, oh. <laughs> Wow. You know, beautiful body shots and stuff. And, and, you know, I look to present myself that way. You know, I think that, you know, along the marriage part, along the, the journey, I had to go through hard hardships to now be who I am today. You know, and, and I think that's the beauty of life. Is it not? The beauty of life is teaching you experiences and lessons. Nothing more, nothing less. That's all it is. You know? it, it, in that journey, from 2015, since you were last in with Ortiz, to obviously this point now, and you're a very different cat now. Obviously, I, I saw some pictures the other day of when you two were facing off for the Golden Gloves and your babies, man. You're very young guys yeah. in there. Obviously, you look fresh-faced, <laughs> clean-shaven, looking all young, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but, so, but so much has happened since then, professionally and personally, of course. You're a completely yes. different guy, even though you're still only, only 26 years of age and achieved so much. At, at 17... Did you believe by the time you would hit 26, you would be a two-time Ring Magazine champion, undisputed at lightweight, obviously taking on the guy that was the guy at 140, beating that guy, beating previous champions and the likes of Richard Comey. Most of this stuff happens for a lot of people as they hit 27, 28, 29, 30 years of age. In their prime, right? <laughs> you've, you've already done it pre-prime. Did, did you believe that that was already, at that time, at 17, did you think, I'm going to turn pro and that thing's going to happen? 
I knew one thing and one thing only from all of this was this. When I turned pro, I knew I'm finally home. Because the amateurs are very hard for me. My style yeah. is not of amateur like. It's more pro style like. And I think that was the only thing that I could say that I knew I was going to be okay was because now I'm finally home. Now I'm finally in a place that will fit my style. I'm finally in a place that will fit my IQ-ness, you know? And, and that is the most important thing in the sport of boxing is your IQ, what's your level at, the challenges that you take, the risks that you go after, you know? And, and that's the most important part that I actually want to educate the next generation that, that follows is if you really want to show the world how great you are, you must step up to the plate every time. No matter if you believe in yourself in those moments, just take it because it's meant for you, you know, and, and I'm, I'm going after stuff like that, stuff that my eyes cannot even see, you know. So and, 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 and that's really what. But do I believe that I was going to be all of this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But I took the chance. And that's all you need in life is to mm. take chances. Well, it's interesting you say that. Is that why then we're still in that momentum? And that's why we're hearing you call out people like Terence Crawford, for example, this week. Is, is that... You damn right. <laughs> <laughs> you damn right. And they're going to get this. They're going to get thunder and they're going to get lightning. So they, and you know what I'm saying? And then we put them together, we're going to give them a sonic boom. So it, it just goes all in, con in conjunction, man. And I'm so grateful because that's how we get bigger fights. And that's how we get the best fighting the best. You got to get guys like Teofimo. Man, they got to make more of me. They should clone me more out there for the sport of boxing so that we could keep this amp. <laughs> you, see, you see, people will watch and listen to this interview and they'll hear me say Teofimo calls out uh, Terence Crawford. And then automatically... the automatically the thought process is, oh, that's crazy. He's 140 and there's plenty of fights for him. But listen, when you actually sit back and think about that call out, it makes an awful lot of sense because as fight fans, we want to see the best guys fight the best guys. We want yes. to see the biggest challenges in the world. And when you think of years gone by and the great fights, you think of lineal champions from one weight division challenging another lineal champion from another weight division, the Durans against the Leonards, for example. And you think about you being the one at 140 and him being the one at 147. Yes, there's fights at 140, of which I would love to see, and I'll get to them in a minute. But if you if we can make Teofimo Lopez versus Terence Crawford this year, that's a super fight. That's like that's like generational. You know what I'm saying? And then and then we're gonna keep going. You know what I'm saying? We don't stop here. You know, Terrence Crawford is not the next guy. No, we surpass Terrence Crawford. We move on to the next. You know what I'm saying? This, But right now is, like I said, my objective is this. It's the most important fight of my whole entire career. Scratch off the Taylor, scratch off the Loma. It is Jermaine Ortiz who is next. And that's my main guy that I got to focus on because none of this even matters if I don't, you know? Mm. You know this. However, however, I have to start rolling that ball to have folks like yourself bring that up and understand what it really means. What is the definition of boxing? The best facing the best. Regardless of the outcome, we need to see two pioneers face always. And that's the only way we get to save our beloved sport. You know, I was saying in my past interviews, if we don't do this, you know what I'm saying? If we don't do this and this becomes a money pit, so they're saying, and if, if this becomes a just an entertainment business and not a sport business, mm -hmm. then there goes boxing. Then there goes, well, you don't, you, you're good. You have MMA, but you know, some folks that just do boxing like myself, don't, we don't have a job. So what we're basically doing right now, if these businessmen out here that say boxing is a business, boxing is a business. Um, well, good luck. I should, uh, Everyone that says boxing is a business, like Leonard Ellerberry, um, I honestly believe that I should go give him a cardboard box because that's where he's going to be living in if they keep this this gimmick up. You know what I mean? And I and I mean this with the utmost respect because, hey, the man did a lot for Floyd Mayweather. He managed his career very well. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to take anything away from Leonard Ellerberry. And look what he's done for all the other fighters that have been under their stable, like Javante Tank Davis, who is now called Wahid. So, you know... um. I just look at it from that standpoint. For everyone that's saying boxing is a business, I understand that point. But the real, real business is handling it in the ring. If we don't do that, I'm sorry to say, just like I called out two years ago about Showtime coming out of boxing, we just missed two pioneer, two, two 
Our Twin Towers have gone down. HBO and Showtime. So what do we have left, ladies and gentlemen? Let's make the fights happen. Who cares? You know, and uh, and you know, there's another thing. I want to say it on yours and yours only because this is the pound for pound headshot, I will say. This is the pound for pound headshot I'm going to give everyone. No more pay-per-view. No more. No more pay-per-view. We don't need it. The streaming apps is the way to go. We need stuff like that. We need people like Peacock to come in the mix. I would love to be under Peacock. You know what I'm saying? However, I'm still doing my partnership and great deals with ESPN. Won't scratch that. You know what I'm saying? However, and for ESPN, if we as fighters, because our contract with top rank ends in 2025. So if, if that's the case, if that's the case, hey, to Bob Iger, who is the owner of Walt Disney and CEO of the company, the chairman, I will tell you this. If you're still involved and still interested in, in, in supporting boxing and having it on your platform, then let's have Disney Plus. Move us on to Disney Plus. You know what I'm saying? Because Disney Plus was actually originally um, brought up in 2019 in, in December. Mm. You know, December of 2019 was when Disney Plus was created. I've done my research. You know what I'm saying? Prime Video, Prime, Amazon Prime was invented in 2006, you know? And then following that was Netflix in 2007. So I've done my research and, and I just want to help the next generation because they don't got what Teofimo has. You know what I'm saying? But a great champion, you know what a great champion does? Passes the torch on to the next guys because they need this. I love boxing way too much to see it go down the way it is right now. I think a lot you know, of fans would support exactly what you said. Listen, I've just been giving the thumbs up. It's a smart move, from, is it not? It's a very smart move. Smart move. Get it not. to as many people as you possibly can. It's as simple as that. And, and, the... and I know Bob. And I know Bob Iger might say, "Well, we got Hulu as well because it's a bundle package with ESPN. We have ESPN, ESPN Plus, we have Hulu, and we have Disney Plus, right? So when you do these subscriptions, you know." And and it's so much better if if and I know it's competition with these gentlemen, with these with these businessmen, you know, and with corporate. So I'm just trying to be little old me, little old Teofimo, the Latino guy, whatever you want to call me. Um, I'm just trying to help everyone see more than what I am. I'm not just a boxer and a fighter. I truly am a businessman, and I look forward to really establish that this year for my career. A game changer. Listen. Absolutely. I've just been given the thumbs up by Gabe. I just got two more and you can do this quick, my friend. One, when people tune in on February 8th, on February 8th, what can they expect from the takeover? And secondly, give me the roadmap this year. How many times am I going to see you in the ring in 2024? And who against? Yes, 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 yes. All right. So I'll say this here loud and clear. February 8th against Jermaine Ortiz, Mandalay Bay, Michelob Ultra Arena. What you're going to see on Super Bowl weekend and Super Fight, this Super Fight, you're going to see the Mason Menard. You're going to see Mason Menard. I am, I am gaining all of this back, and I got to leave it with an example. And the only way you put fear in any other fighter is with what you do with these. And that's what I'm going to show with Jermaine Ortiz. Ooh, that rhymes so well, man. Woo! That rhymes so well, did it not? So, you know, that's what I plan on doing. And how many fights do I plan on doing this year? Well, it's up to my body, I'll say that. And at the same time, three to four times. The minimum is three times. Because the more active I am, the better performances I will do. You know? Will we get, will we get unification at 140, do you think? To be honest, we'll see when it presents itself. I have asked for every fighter, from the Cambosis rematch to Devin Haney calling him literally from his phone and finding his phone number to who else? Oh, Sabrero Matias. We gave him a contract and they came back and said, no, my hand is injured. But then we see a video of him playing pool with his friends. So like, you know what I'm saying? It's up to that side. That's all I can say, Adam. I can't do anything. I can't force them to fight me. They're listening to their team. They're listening to their managers. They're moving that route. Right now, I'm the biggest name in the sport of boxing. Just point blank, period. You know, just say it like it is. It's entertainment, baby. That's what it is. Teofimo's an entertainer, you know? And and all I say is that they have their moves with these fighters. However, they're all using whose name to get there. There To get there is Teofimo Lopez, the takeover. You know, you got guys like Arno Barbosa coming into the mix, trying to bring that in and have cameras out because it's all clout. And me, as a, as a, that's how you do it. 
to any other person out there, you don't hit them right there. Man, this kid had a big chin. I never saw such a beautiful chin in my life to punch. You know, and and I grabbed my toothpick and I said, if I hit this guy, there goes all my endorsement deals. There goes mm-hmm. the mugshot that the, everyone is looking for, right? There goes the pleading the deal that I am not trying to have, right? And and then then goes my everything else, right? Along with it, just by doing one action, punching him, knocking him out in front of all his people, and everybody else be like, you know, and then suing me. On that note, my friend, it is always super entertaining. And one thing I want to say, it is great to have you back. The the boxing the the, the me back, right? The me That's back. It. I can That's feel it. him. I can feel him. I can man. see him. Adam, I can good feel to see this. Man, the, hey, oh my gosh. Yo, did they not just bite more than they chewed? Oh my gosh. Oh. Ooh. But hey, we're going to show that February 8th. I want everyone to tune in. Please do not miss this fight. This is the 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 new version of boxing. That's it. This is going to be the new version of the sport of boxing. And that's all I want to do for the young guys out there that are still in USA boxing, that are still in the amateurs, that are still competing in the International Olympic Committee. You know, those that are aiming for those gold medals, silver medals, bronze medals, just to even medal in the Olympic Games. Everyone knows the magnitude of it. Your life changes overnight. And I'm here all about the kids. You know this, Adam. If it's not about the kids, I wouldn't do this at all. My man. Pleasure as always. Stay fit and healthy through throughout this camp and we'll see you on February 8th. <laughs>